All right, so welcome to the start of the station build. This may well end up being a video that is split up into multiple different sections given how long I anticipate that this is going to take. This is something that I have been planning for quite some time. It's something that I've been talking about for probably two years. Admittedly, the last year I didn't really do a whole lot at Newcastle Central, but I haven't been gone completely. I have still been thinking about this and kind of planning this out. What I have been kind of procrastinating on and delaying on is the best way to actually build this. If you think back to when I built the station platforms, um, you know, that was a big job. It was all made out of cod. And I ended up having some amount of problems because out here in the trench shed, it's not completely watertight, uh, weatherproof. There's some amount of moisture that still gets in here. And so I did have a little bit of problem with the tops of the station platforms and warping, which is why we now have this plaster stuff on top. Um, I had gone back through, covered it all in plaster, and then put on this kind of granite stuff. And so I do like the finish of it, but it kind of made me realize that a whole bunch of card building out here is probably not the smartest thing to be doing. Now, you may be saying, Ian, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at card right now. You are. These are templates. These are the first templates that I've done for the south side of Newcastle Station. And I am just kind of doing this to make sure that my positioning is correct, my measurements are correct. And even with these, uh, I'm probably going to adjust it ever so slightly. Uh, I'll move the camera around in, in, in just a minute so you can look around. But my idea here is that I am probably going to then laser cut all of these. I do have a laser cutter in the garage. And so again, I think I'd shared before that I'm working on converting um, an actual uh, GA, general aviation aircraft, four-seater general aviation aircraft, a Piper PA-28 into a flight simulator. And part of that is going to be figuring out, um, or was figuring out, a whole bunch of laser cutting. I'm there. I've done a whole bunch of that um, over the last year, a year and a half. Uh, I've been figuring out a lot of different things about uh, doing some laser cutting and uh, modeling, how I can figure out um, doing that kind of computer rendering and then converting that into flat structures that can then be cut out. Now I think I'm competent enough that I'm not gonna that I'm not gonna mess it up, and that I'll be able to convert this kind of card template into something that I can then laser cut. Um, that will then give me a much more solid structure in general, and it will also give me something that's going to be able to uh, withstand some of the moisture and the elements that will be out here. If I then, and I probably would then cover it in some kind of um, card stock to give the texture, to give the coloring, but then, you know, being able to do that, uh, that clear matte varnish over it, it shouldn't be warping because that, that structure underneath is going to be that kind of hardwood. So that's kind of where we're at. We're going to have a little bit of a closer look in, and I'll talk a little bit more about what I'm going to be doing. Oh yeah, so camera's probably going to get a little bit wibbly wobbly uh, as I'm holding it, but this is then resed up a little bit, and I'm going to try and do uh, a side by side with an actual photo of Newcastle Station, and I'm playing a little bit of liberties here and taking a little bit of artistic license, modeler's discretion, but the three curved station pieces in the middle are somewhat prototypical. I think that this is actually going to be thicker than it would have been and uh, in real life it's much narrower than that. It's much more uh, like that kind of width and those are prites that you have over there. But again this was a little bit of a design choice there that was limited by the track. So if we pan out because of the way that the track curves in we have a curve point um, for in here, another curve point right there, curve point, curve point. We had four curve points to be able to get it in, and so I was limited by the radius on those points, was not going to try and get into handling all those points. And I don't think it would have bought me anything, to be honest. I wouldn't have been able to increase the curvature, uh, increase the radius, I guess. And so this kind of platform area here, that I guess is between what well, platform two which is where the HST is, and Platform 9, where that Class 108 is, is probably wider than it would have been in real life. So I know that this is a little bit wider, but, again, we're going to have to just take that, but the idea is that it is fairly prototypical in that the two outside arches are a little bit shorter, not massively so, but there is a height difference. 
ends up about one inch in HL scale. So that's going to be seven and a half feet, I guess, in real life. Um, no, yeah, seven feet in real life, something like that. Math isn't my strong point. Um, but that might not be enough, so I may raise this ever so slightly now that I've got this template in place, but I think that's that's good because it's not a massive difference between them. And then over here where I'm kind of playing around um, with some additional platforms, in Newcastle Station of, you know, the kind of era of the late 80s, this platform didn't exist at all, as far as I am aware. <coughs> What we would have had was the platform here, and then the edge here would have been an actual exterior wall, and this platform did not exist. This is a, a letter platform addition that came about sometime in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s maybe. not entirely sure on my history. I'm sure someone um, will be able to help me out there, Ooh, knocking over some cars. But I wanted to model it because I wanted to have a little bit of extra space in the station so that I could park up um, some DMUs, and honestly, and this is where you'll see those cars I just knocked over, um, I didn't want to just have these kind of four freight lines, uh, three freight lines that would have been going through, one of them's the siding, and then uh, some of the freight lines that go through. That is, or was, I guess, the prototype, and like I said, I just wanted to expand that out and have this extra station in. So again, we're having a little bit different here <clears throat> in that this is um, going to be platform and so the actual exterior wall run down the middle here, but somewhat prototypical is that those three are in a line. This one is then a little bit at an angle because I think what we actually have, and again, I'm not going to be able to model it perfectly, is that those three are actually the ones that curve around and this almost runs straight through. Again, <clears throat> curvature of the track. I'm going to come over to where I've got a whole bunch of stuff getting cut up down here. Because of the curvature of the track and all the point work coming in, this is way wider really than it should be. Um, and actually in the prototype, it's between platforms two and three where there's a gap. It probably is almost that um, because that's where the curvature spreads apart. This is where you would have one of the main front bridges going over. So again, because of the constraints of the space that I have in the shed, this is how it's looking at the moment. So this will probably be curved. It's not going to run straight through. Excuse my voice while I'm trying to talk through all this. So, trying to get to is this is the south side. I've got templates that um, have already started cutting out for the north side and start to run platform walls through. Um, but the next step is going to be converting these card pieces into the computer, laser cut those on wood. Uh, I shouldn't need to have the, all the little triangle supports just holding it upright once I get the walls in place. Um, but at least for now that's how it's going to be. And then over here, <clears throat> I think again I'm going to take a little bit of modeler's discretion. What we would have had, there's a whole bunch of old cobweb pieces and dead flies that have been knocked down the corner there. What we would have in that corner, um, the actual old station building itself would run around that back edge. I'm probably going to build out and have something in here, otherwise it just got a whole bunch of empty space. So I'm going to put in this station building. Um, but if we take a step back, you get some idea, that's roughly what we'll be dealing with. So again, constraints of size, constraints of the radius of the curves that I have coming in and out of the session, it's not going to completely fit an HST rig in, but it, the real thing at the time also wouldn't. We have to remember, and again, try and put a side-by-side -side picture of Newcastle Station as it stands right now. Uh, I would have stood, I guess, in the 80s and 90s, but does still look right now. There were then covered platform areas that would have come all the way down here. Um, so people would have been standing outside of the main building, but still in the covered areas. I don't think there was there, but certainly here, here, I'm going to model it here, even though, again, we have some model's discretion going on. So I'm hoping that this still looks like Newcastle Central once it's done, even though the actual station itself is going to be a little bit more condensed than I really would have liked, but 
that's also been why I've been delaying this so long so I could start to render some of this on the computer and try and figure out how I wanted it to look because if I don't get this station building correctly, and this is what I was telling um, my friends recently, if I don't get this station building correct, then there's really no point in doing Newcastle Central. And so I'm, I'm trying to strike this balance between what is Newcastle Central actually going to look like, and if we move this down a little bit, because this isn't where it's going to be. It's going to be something like that. That is then, and back up, that is then the area that's going to be covered roughly by the roofing. And again, they are uh, HST Mark II, Mark III couches there. You know, so you're getting almost four, three, four that are going to be underneath the roofing. That's still a pretty good length. That's a pretty good size platform because that curved roof is still going to be an absolute bear to put in place. Um, but I'm going to quit waffling now. I just wanted to kind of talk through some of this, let you know part of my thought processes, see if that thing kicks off some constructive and polite and friendly, hopeful comments um, as to ways that I could be doing this a little bit differently, maybe, or hopefully words of encouragement. Um, and then, again, once I think the roofing and the walls are in place, then it'll really start to look like something. So let's go get those north sides done and get some mock walls in place and come back and take a look. And so there's a few bits of scenic detailing on the platforms as well that I kind of dotted around that you might have seen from a little bit of a different video where I talked about that. But now starting to get the first laser cut piece of roofing in place. It is taller than the other ones. What I kind of realized when I was looking back on photos is that the card ones that I had were probably a little bit too low. Let's move in a little bit. So what we had was probably a little bit too low if you look at that class 47 on the left. It's kind of awkward with uh, that signal gantry in the way. But it was probably a little bit too low. And so the class 47 and the 37 that are in the foreground here, that would have been on this uh, on this additional extension here. That looks a little bit better. Um, I'm kind of eyeballing it at about twice the height of the loco in terms of you could put another loco on top just about and being able to get through. I think that's about the height and I think scale wise completely forgetting what it was right around 22 feet something like that 20 to 22 feet um, visually that looks okay to me I'm not convinced about the curve on the roof uh, the curve on the roof maybe looks a little bit too high for how wide it is um, but I think once they get the other three done we'll get an idea the one just to the left so that's where my finger is finger of God this one is gonna be pretty much about the same size that one's a little bit taller and then this one should match those ones so I think that they'll look okay once they're in place but again the idea here is that I'm wanting to do this extension first so I need to do another one of those to go on the far side that is wider so unfortunately I can't just tell a laser cutter hey go and cut me another one like this it will be the exact same design I think um, but uh, it needs to be a little bit wider and then I can start to put a couple of the walls on that I have for this extension piece as well and kind of see see how it all looks like once that's done North side uh, of that roof put in place, or the outside of the roof put in place, is a little bit wider. As you can see, the tracks do kind of diverge a little bit. I have cleared away all of the station detailing from there as well. And I've now got length of wood cut here um, to height and to length that um, I'm going to have to put in place and then curve between the two. It's going to kind of leave it there, but what you'll end up with is one of the outside walls right there. And there'll be more to it in terms of, uh, you know, probably cutting in some windows and some doors. I'm not entirely sure what to do because kind of my biggest fear across all of this project is that once I start to put on the side wall and the roof, you then lose a lot of what's actually going on inside the station. So that's one of the reasons, again, why I think these outside walls of 
the station room is a little bit smaller than it would be because all of the trains then pull through and essentially are parked a little bit on the outside. And so as they would be pulling through, you can still see what's going on. The still signals are still there. So as so long as I can see inside for the DME platforms at the back, there's you know six platforms there. We've got one, two, and then uh, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So long as you can still see inside enough to be able to pull DMUs in, then the rest of it I'm not that concerned about. I think it'll look okay. Um, but this outside one, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to cut in detailing windows, or if I would just then use whatever the material on the outside are going to be that's going to like simulate brickwork and stuff like that. I haven't quite decided because realistically, when I stand around here for an operating session. Let's try and move back. You know, I'm not really going to actually see much through those windows anyway, um, so we'll see. But I'm going to try and glue at least this first uh, this first outside wall in place, um, let that dry up, and then I can measure exactly what it would be on the far wall. Again, taking into account a little bit of the curve there, and then we should get some kind of sense of, uh, of what the, the station itself is going to start to look like. It's uh, been in and redded the wife's kitchen again, taking the kids' spaghetti meatballs, and that's kind of loosely holding it in place. It is glued, it's just to try and give some kind of idea of very slight curve that would be in it. Very slight, as you can see, and this is also why I'm glad that I'm not having to do all of these walls, all of the interior walls like this as well, because uh, that would really be a pain to try and figure it out, but pretty much all of the other interior walls, um, they're just using um, upright pillars that I've already been 3D designing, and I have just so many of those that I need to get printed as well before I can actually start to get all the roof supports in place. Um, but that's loosely what it would look like, and then I'm trying to figure out if there will be another one there. There's actually only one interior wall. It's a little bit of a weird shape because you'd have the other three of the main Dobson train shed would come across here. Um, this extension that was built a little bit later is then set back some, and so there is then a little bit of a gap, and then there is a, a very much, much, much smaller, um, very narrow. It will probably be, um, you know, just a couple of inches wide or so on my scale. That would then join the extension part to the main Dobson shed um, on this little part, and then by the time you get down there, they are joined together and they are aligned. So, not entirely sure what I'm going to do for that interior wall, because it's not like there's one wall here, and then there's another wall on the actual main Dobson shed, so I'm going to figure that out, but this is loosely where it would be. And then I do have, um, this is the south um, set of exterior walls for the main part of the platform station itself, the Dobson shed, and then this is the north wall, and that right one does get cut off because it basically runs into that um, skyboard. Not enough room to be able to do the whole thing, and that's fine because it then just kind of carries on into uh, into a little bit of dead space. What would get into the main part of Newcastle Central building itself, uh, where you would come in from the the street, uh, the kind of passenger entrance part of it. Um, so happy with these came out, and again, one of the reasons why it was a little bit slow in getting this going, I, I've been sitting on the design files for a little while, was that I was hoping that. I was going to be able to get in and use the bigger laser cutter um, where I used to work. Through all of this, I've actually changed jobs. Um, where I'm working now does also have a large bed laser, so I would be able to do up to, I think, 24 by 48 inches, um, which is what I had been able to do at my previous job. So my intent had been to cut this all as one piece. Um, so that it was somewhat solid all the way through, and the same on the north wall as well. Um, I've had to cut them down into three individual sections on the south and the north side, uh, just so that I could fit them on the smaller laser cutter that I have here. Uh, I can nominally do something like 12 inches by 8 inches on the laser cutter that I have in the garage. Um, so I'm going to glue these together and then uh, run one beam probes along the back just to somewhat give it a little bit more support and then they should go in place. Uh, this then as we saw in the cardboard one, this south one kind of goes off at an angle and so we'll come to about here and then all I'll probably do is just take a board all the way back and say okay that one's straight and then there's some weird kind of platform um, canopies that come out here 
and then over here on the north side uh, like I said those three I think they're gonna come from about here got a little mark there where the cardboard templates have been so they're gonna go straight out there into that board um, and then there's only one little canopy section I'm not sure if I'm going to do it um, on the prototype I think there would only have been a canopy section there and there wouldn't be anything here I think there's just a canopy section there um, but yes yeah, space wise I'm not sure if I'm going to do that I'm gonna look and see once I get that north wall in place so going to glue up these three sections for the north and then for the south wall kind of drop those in place and then probably do the one external wall back there as well um, that should give me a good idea of the framework of how this is going to be um, and then it's just 3d printing 3d printing all of the columns that are then going to have to go all the way throughout um, and then from there that's where the fun math part then comes in because I then have a whole bunch of curved roof pieces that have to go in as well um, I think my math's okay but it's also one where I needed to put this in place and make sure that because of the curves that I'm getting it all just so um, yeah, it's kind of tough on something of this scale, um, but we'll give it a go. We'll glue these, get them put in place, and then probably just call it, uh, call it a day on this video until I get the rest of those platform roof supports ready. So this is the north and the south ends of the station buildings uh, now glued together. Try and flip one over so we can see. Not really a whole lot to it. I've tried to keep it fairly simple and pretty lightweight. So there's just some strips of wood uh, running all the way across keeping it straight and then on the joins and so the whole thing is super duper lightweight reason being is that I need it to be strong but also light because when I have some idea of how I can put these in place and move them around um, because I'm having to reach over I don't want anything that's going to be too heavy uh, to try and do that with so I'm going to try and put these in place, loosely put these in place, just to make sure that they are all correct. I'm going to be really bummed after um, doing the cardboard mock-ups and then getting it all on the computer and laser cutting if these aren't quite right. Uh, so we'll try it out and see how it looks. Alright, so it's very loosely held in place, and so comedic timing probably means that in the middle of me talking that these are going to fall over. Because I've just got a little pot of humbrol weathering powder holding it up. But overall, very happy with how that looks. As we've kind of talked about before, we've got to do some amount of scale modeling when it comes down to actually doing it here on the layout. So if you look, I'll try and do this without moving the camera too much. So different roofs, where's the finger of God coming in from the top? Different roofs here. You've got the outside ones that are the same height. This middle one is a little bit higher. I'm going to try and put a video, a picture, sorry, up on screen right now of what the prototype looks like. This middle roof should be taller realistically but again because of now trying to condense it down and have some sense of scale um, when I had done it with a cardboard mock-up it just looked unrealistic so I think this is a good balance where that middle uh, that middle roofing section is going to be taller uh, and it is going to be a bigger curve to it like when you actually see it from the top as well it's going to cover up more space um, so that's just kind of the balance of we're doing this in a scale model. It's not complete one-to-one -one scale We're trying to do it in the space that uh, have out here in the train shed But happy with how that looks on the cardboard model again. You may remember finger of God somewhere here We go on the cardboard model. I had a wall section in here um, on the prototype It wasn't there and so doing the laser cutting I decided not to put it there if I want to add it in later, it's going to be a bit easy to do, but uh, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Let's go and look over on the north side. Let's try and kind of pan out a little bit so you get a little bit more of a sense of scale. Over on the north side, there's a little bit more of a mess over here. Let me try and clear stuff out the way. So, same thing as we had on that south side. This middle one uh, on the prototype would be a little bit taller. Uh, we probably have it at least an inch taller when we're doing it in model form. But in terms of having to then, you know, compress it and convert it, that's kind of just what I'm going to go with. But quite happy with the spacing of everything. I'm happy with the look of them. I think once it would be spread black and um, dirtied up a little bit, it would look pretty darn close. On the north side here, these were all open up. These are all exposed. On the south side, they had some kind of glazing. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the glazing in place or not. 
I don't really know if it would add much to it. Uh, I might leave it open again, just what we have on the prototype versus what we have on the model to be able to see inside. I might leave the glazing off on that south side. The north side here will be exposed. And if we pan a little bit to where my spaghetti, spaghetti meatballs are, again, this is where I was saying we have that kind of offset that is per the prototype though. And again, when I was first looking at this, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to model it. Um, but this did actually turn out a lot better than I was expecting. So now I just need to figure out what, I'm, what am I going to be doing for an internal wall, uh, one internal wall that would go in there. Okay. Let's try and move back out again. So I think I'm probably going to call this video done here because now I'm uh, doing a whole bunch of the 3D printed pillars that would go right the way through the station now in terms of actually holding up the roof. Uh, I need to get those in place and figure out the curves as to where they're going to be placed on the platforms themselves to then be able to get the roof in. Um, but I think this is probably a good stopping point for now. Um, this is like the hardest part in my mind was getting these, getting these in place. The rest of it it's still going to be difficult, but it should be a little bit easier to get on with. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm glad to finally be sharing some of this because it's been a long time coming and a long time of me just waiting most of this year um, <laughs> to actually get cracked on with some of this, uh, hoping that I could have got access to some more tools to make it a little bit easier. But again, happy with how this has ended up turning out and so a little bit reinvigorated now to keep making some more progress. Thanks for watching. Take care. I hope you subscribe and follow along and we'll be back again soon.